up, gentlemen? So in this world, there are two types of dudes. There are those that are dominant and those that are submissive. Which one are you? A dominant man has control over himself, but also his environment. A submissive man has taken the dominant man sloppy seconds in everything, whether or not that be career, whether or not that be friends, whether or not that be spicy ass senoritas. The dominant man will win, submissive man will not. Today, guys, I'm going over 10 traits that make somebody a dominant man. The first trait of a dominant man, he doesn't lie to make himself look better, right? Dominant men know, yo, mama, I'm awesome. Suck it. I don't care if you don't like me. I am who I am. Be who you are because you are amazing, gentlemen. There's no reason for you to act like you're something that you're not. If somebody doesn't like you because you don't drive the right car, you're not wearing the right clothes, fuck them. Who cares? Your life. Remember that, gentlemen. And if you expect to ever dominate your life, you better be true to who you are. Which brings us to the second trait of a dominant man. He speaks his truth. Dominant man owns his opinion. He's like, yo, whatever. You don't like what I have to say? I don't care. Deal with it because I am who I am and I believe what I believe. I'm not going to craft and twist my thoughts or my message just to make you happy. No, I'm going to tell you what I feel. I'm going to speak my truth, gentlemen. And this is something when people do it, it's almost like mind blowing, right? Because we're so used to people bending over and kissing everybody's ass and not wanting to offend everybody. Gentlemen, the fact is, if you are a dominant man, you better speak your truth. Speaking of dominating, gentlemen, have you dominated that thumbs up button? If you haven't, gentlemen, dominate the shit out of it. It's going to make you feel better. It's also going to make me a happy little dominant alpha. Gentlemen, the third thing, the third thing that makes somebody dominant is that he doesn't waste time bitching, complaining, and whining like a little whiny beta. Dominant man is wasting zero time blowing smoke, complaining, whining. No, it's not fair, gentlemen. What's not fair? Tell me, come here, come here, come here. Tell me what's not fair. No, seriously, I'm listening. What's not fair? Gentlemen, get over it. Life is not fair. This is a reality that you better get under control and understand. If you ever want to be dominant, if you ever want to control your life and your destiny, you've got to understand that if you want something, you are going to take it, which is actually the fourth thing that dominant men do. They take what they want. The common theme that I see with successful people is that they go out and take what they want. They don't wait for it. They don't ask for it. They take it. This is something incredibly important and powerful. And once you understand that it is your job, your responsibility to go out and grab anything and everything that you want in life, gentlemen, this is when your life is going to get better because so many dudes are waiting. They're sitting. They're thinking. They're planning. Gentlemen, stop thinking and planning. Go out and grab that shit. Speaking of grabbing, if you want to grab Villain, the newest EDP fragrance by Pete and Pedro, I'm going to link to it down below along with the limited time discount code. The fifth trait of a dominant man, he doesn't neglect his personal presentation. One, two, three. Three. Somebody has just formed an opinion about you based solely on the nonverbal communicating that you're doing, which is why dominant men understand it's critical that you take care of the nonverbal communicating that you're doing, aka personal packaging and brand. Guys, dominant men know that they better be well groomed, right? It doesn't mean they got a super trendy, flashy hairstyle, but they don't look like a savage. Their style is straight. They're not wearing clothes that are worn out and wrinkled. They have a look, they've got a presence. Something else that they do, gentlemen, is smell amazing. One of the quickest and easiest ways for you to elevate your nonverbal communicating game is to smell amazing because there are a lot of dudes out there that stink. If you're ready to take your cologne game next level, you got to check out Villain by Pete and Pedro. This stuff has just launched and the reviews are ridiculous. Seven years ago, I started Pete and Pedro with the simple goal to make better hair products for me because I was sick and tired of one or two products and a line being good, but not all of them. And just like with hair product, the reason why I got into fragrance is because I wanted to solve my own problem. I love the Creed Aventus, right? Amazing fragrance, tons of compliments. The problem and downside, $350 for a bottle. And so I went to a lab and I created Rebel, inspired heavily, heavily by Creed Aventus. It's not a clone or a copy, but it is definitely inspired. But instead of $350, selling Rebel for under $50. Now, when we started, we launched with Rebel, and then through your feedback, we tweaked the formula, made it stronger, more intense, so that it would last longer. Well, over the years, I've developed a few other fragrances. I've taken all of the knowledge, all of the information, all of the feedback, and created the newest edition, which is Villain. And just like all three of the additional Pete and Pedro fragrances, Villain has an inspiration. 
inspiration. And the inspiration fragrance is Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. It is an incredibly mysterious, sexy fragrance that's warm, a little sweet, a little spicy, that is absolutely a crowd pleaser and a lady killer. If you want to check out Bill and Guys, I'm going to link to it down below. There's also going to be a limited time discount code to save you some cash. It's also going to save you if you want to grab Rebel, King, or Hero, the other fragrances. And guys, remember, we also sell deluxe samples. So if you guys aren't ready to pull the trigger on a big bottle, you can always grab a deluxe sample. And it's really cool because it does have a little sprayer on it. And I'm telling you guys, these things fly off the shelves. All right, guys, hit the links down below. Go check out the fragrances at Pete and Pedro. I'm telling you, if you're looking for something a little dark, a little mysterious, you should check out Villain. And if you're looking for something that is just clean, sexy, pure, unadulterated, amazing, you got to check out Rebel. The amount of compliments you're going to get with this stuff is insane. The sixth trait of a dominant man is somebody that exhibits self-control and discipline. Self-control and discipline is probably one of the most important aspects of success. Because if you ever expect yourself to be successful at anything, you need to be able to focus. You also need the ability to push down those urges to not work right now and run out and go party with your boys or chase spicy senoritas or spend money that you shouldn't be spending. If you have the ability to be focused, disciplined, and exercise self-control, you are gonna be so far ahead of most dudes because most dudes can't, right? They're too busy chasing the spicy senoritas, right? But here's a little secret. If you work, if you're disciplined, if you exercise self-control, you're gonna work now. You're gonna be super successful. When this happens, the spicy senoritas are gonna chase you. The seventh trait of a dominant man is that he leads by example, right? Think about that for a second, right? A dominant man, he knows that other people are watching because he's so awesome, right? And so he knows that he better walk the walk, right? One of the things that YouTube has caused me to do is be a better person. You know why? Because I don't want to disappoint or let you down. When I realize that there are actually people paying attention to what I do, what I say, the way that I act, what I'm talking about, I realize that I have a responsibility not only to myself, but to you. Guys, dominant men, people that kick ass, understand that it's not just about talking, it's about doing and executing. The eighth trait of a dominant man is somebody who understands and has the ability to say, no, I'm not doing it. Submissive men and nice guys are notorious for saying yes when they should be saying no. They're so worried about upsetting people, they're so worried about being liked, that they put their own best interest oftentimes in jeopardy. Guys, dominant men know that, hey, if it's it's not right, I gotta say no. It's not that I don't wanna help you, it's that I need to help myself first. The next trait of a dominant man, he's happy. He's just never satisfied. He is relentless in his pursuit of better. And the biggest difference between men that are dominant and men that are submissive is that dominant men are constantly striving for more and better. Submissive men a lot of times are comfortable. They're like, yo, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't wanna work harder. I don't wanna try extra hard. Dominant men are like, yo, things are good. Good. They can be better, and I'm gonna make that shit happen. And the last trait of somebody who is dominant is somebody with integrity. Guys, integrity is something that nobody can steal from you. No matter how rich, no matter how poor, if you are a man of integrity, it means you've got good moral character. You've got a good moral compass. You are doing what is right as opposed to what's easy. And this is something that in today's world is very uncommon, it seems. People are doing a lot of things. Their integrity, I think, is 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 lacking, but if you are somebody that holds themselves to a higher standard, congratulations. Not only are you going to be more successful, you are dominant.